I'm so happy this morning. I'm about two weeks behind on clipping my pastures. It's beginning to irritate the eyes of the cattle. Uh, but I had a little minor surgery and I have been absolutely housebound for the last uh, seven days. So it feels good to get out and be able to get after it. Let's get to work. Got to hook up my hydraulic hoses here so that I can raise this a little bit to fit under my drawbar. Thanks, Chris. I couldn't get the tongue of the uh, bush hog to go down far enough. You know, it's been a year since I've hooked up to it and I forgot I've got to raise this and I've got to take the pins out of the wings before everything operates as it should. It's like you have to retrain me for the first 15 minutes every morning. Okay, now I put the linchpin in the drawbar. Now I've got to raise the bush hog and take my uh, jack out from underneath it. Before we hook up the PTO, I need to spray down the PTO drive of the tractor with WD-40. Make it go on a little bit better. Also need to put WD-40 on the inside of the PTO shaft of the bush hog. Last year about this time I did a video called Heavy PTO Shaft and gave you a little hint on how an old man makes it easier to put his heavy PTO shaft on the tractor. A friend of mine, a college friend from 50 years ago, after he watched it, he came by to visit last fall and he said, I brought you something that'll make it even easier than the rope that you used in your video. And it does. It's a, it's a little cheap tie down strap that you put under it. Attach it to your arms. And then as you lift it, you can just tighten it down that way and it doesn't slip back. Makes it a lot easier than adjusting your rope two or three times. So I appreciate his comment here. Thanks to my friend Stoney from North Missouri. Safety experts are always warning farmers to slow down and take it easy and think things through. That way they don't get hurt or hurt their machine. I can testify to that. Several years ago, not this tractor, but my last tractor, I was hooking up to the bush hog exactly the same way I did this morning, but I was in a hurry. I left this door open, pulled forward, and that's been 15 years ago. Even then, it was $600 later I'd learned my lesson to replace the glass in the door. I'm sure it's probably 1200 now. So take your time, slow down, do things right. Always close the door. feel like an idiot telling you this because I've been back in my bush hog in here and storing it for as long as I've owned this place, probably 20 years. Last year, and I'd always, when I backed it in, I had the bush hog raised up completely. The wheels, tires would always hit, because I got a real narrow door here, always hit on both sides at the same time. But I would just back it on through. Last fall, I realized that if I have my bush hog, the hydraulic set all the way down, these wheels come in a little bit and they don't touch. It's embarrassing to say it took me 20 years to learn that. Before I start bush hogging pastures, I gotta sharpen the blades. 
And as you can see, uh, these are the original blades. I'm gonna have to break down someday and buy a new set, but as long as they keep sharpening up pretty good, I'll save the money. One down, five more to go. Greasing the rotary cutter for the first time of each season, you've got to try to grease all the grease zerks. It takes a long time because there's about, I think between 40 and 50 grease zerks on this. Uh, if, if you grease them all, that's what we try to do the first time of the season. Then after that, every 10 or 15 hours, I'll just grease the, the ones in the main drive. I got to get all these down through here on each of the fold up arms and then I think we'll be through. I think we've got it all greased up and we're ready to mow down some pasture stems. Again, I am so happy to be out of the house today after being locked inside for a whole week, ready to get to work clipping some pastures. I always look forward to it.